Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Whiskey Untitled. We are here today to talk about the difference between collecting and drinking your whiskey. A lot of people are into collecting, some people are into drinking, a lot of people are into drinking, and not so much the collecting, so uh, let's see what's going on. Oh, and also on this episode, Charles is selling all his whiskey to buy camera gear. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, all right. And no intro, so side by side, one, two, three. No intro. What? Yeah. Look at that. Look how fast that transition oh. was. What? So, no picture? What? Picture. No oh. intro? Uh, I think no I moved intro? some of my files, so. Oh, deleted. Maybe. Deleted. All of them. But yeah. Hey, did I, wait, did, did I say that I got this last time on the last show? Yes, nope. right? Oh, in that case, don't know what that was. All right, so this is a drinking show. Uh, what is in your glass, my friend? One of three new bottles. All right. It is Bastille Single Malt. I've never seen that one before. Is that new? Have I seen? haven't either. Ah. So I had posted a picture of Bastille, yeah. like of their regular weird blend that they have or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were like, hey, we noticed you never post pictures of our single malt. And I was like, because I can't find any. I've never seen it before. You have a single malt? Question like, mark? Yeah. And they were like, hey, do you uh, want us to drop one off at your house? And I was like, what do you mean what? by drop one off? Creepers. And I guess their area manager is not far from yeah. here, and he comes by buoy all the time. So he was like, yeah. So I came home, and it was on the front porch. That's kind of kind of crazy, but uh, great creepy. marketing. A little creepy, but yeah, but no. The very funny strong thing is, marketing. did you give them your address? If you didn't give the address, that would be creepy. So I gave them my shipping address at first, and then I was like, wait, you're going to drop this off? And I was like, uh, okay, drop off my house then. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Habs. Hello, Eric. Hey yes, it's a good topic, and it's going to be good. Yeah, no, it's going to be fun. Um, Mostly because of too many DMs. What are you drinking, Charles? I am going back to the Battle Blair 90 for, like, the fourth time. Yes. So, okay, you want to hear something really, really dumb? You still don't like no, it? No, it's not, it's not that. I thought this was a port cast finish. Oh, what? No, it's Sherry. So that's hmm? what my brain was thinking. That's why, I, remember I messaged you, I think, a couple days ago. I was like, hey, it's not heavy enough and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude... You're thinking port, aren't you? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, yeah, I am fucking thinking about port. So I was rating it at a different spectrum than what I thought it was. So I feel as though that my first initial taste was definitely the, Charles, you're a dumbass. This is a sherry finish compared to sherry finish stuff. So I'm like, oh, okay. So yes. So like I mentioned before, I think I give it an 8 out of 10. I still wish there was something there, but the sherry spice that I actually enjoy in sherries is there. Yeah. So... <laughs> there you go. And I, to be honest, I wanted to save that dumb moment Ooh. for this show instead for of me just like messaging and be like, hey, you dumbass. I'm dumb live. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, hey, man. Like, I have to admit, though, that when you and Scotch – is it Scotch and Tire? No, it's um, – Eric? No, was it Eric? Another person. Was it – What was it? Was it Whiskey Watch? Maybe it was Whiskey Watch. Steve? Maybe it was Steve. When you guys are saying how good it is and stuff like that, I was like, okay, I'm getting hyped up. Oh, it was, it was Steve. Steve. For sure, yeah. it was Steve. So, yeah. Steve loves it too. So I was like, all right, let's 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 get into it. And then I sat with it and I'm like, hey, this is weird. And that's why I messaged you. I was like, I like it. Uh, I like the Belvini 21 better. And you're like, you're probably in your head like, dude, that's a port. You're on drugs. Yeah, that didn't make any sense. Now, that, now it makes sense. I see what's there going on. Go. Oh, also, Habs, congratulations on drinking the HP full volume because that is my pineapple jam. Dude, man, I... I have to admit that that's probably one heart Island Park bottle that I'll buy a second of. It was actually really good. Granted, this is weird. This stuff tastes like smoky oranges, like mandarin oranges, but they're smoked. It's pretty good. Okay. And then their other one, the other 1792, tastes like apricots, like heavy, like apricots. So, huh. Yeah. I do like apricots a bit more than the oranges, though. So maybe I like that one more. Huh. Wines and whiskeys are shot. <laughs> Eric, you're talking about shopping for booze and saving it for collecting, and it would go to your relatives. It's called a living will and testament, yeah. and I have one. And I think there are some people <laughs> – I collect more than whiskey, and there are some people who are going to be really mad. And some people that would be nice and surprised when they see what happens when I die. All right, man. So, happy so, uh, <laughs> 23 to Charles. Got it. Done. Hi, Santa Cruz. Hey, guys. Oh, should we go through new bottles? Yeah, yeah, two yeah more go for it. So, you got the well. Bastille, right? So, that was – I and did. is that regularly available? Because I've never seen it on shelves. So, it, 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 so they said it is, and I've I've never seen it in my life. It so it's like, I've only seen it online, like on their page. Like, oh, they have a single malt. Great. Never heard of it. 
But um, if you saw that picture of me at a liquor store this weekend, yes. I found some amazing things. I didn't walk out with anything that I saw a picture that you saw a picture. Okay. So I got the Papa's Pilar. Yes, um, the rum, right? So this is Sherry Cast oh, finished. Yeah, yes, rum. this rum. As you can see, I shared with some friends already. I've had this since Saturday. Look how much is you gone. You need a second one. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, already. That's ter terrible. And then I picked up some French vanilla ice cream because... I need this in my oh, life. Yeah, the Spios is not my friend, not a big fan. But this—that's the remake, is right? French vanilla ice cream. Every time I've, I've, yeah, but I've had the original yeah. also, and both are like French vanilla ice cream. Are so they very similar? Because I know batches differ, right? Yeah, they're pretty that's close. Good. good for them. Yeah, but no, the the doctor's doing a good job. Awesome. Bill Lumsden is doing his job. Yeah, Steve, you missed out me um, talking about the Bell Blair ninety. So rewatch the episode. <laughs> yeah, actually, after. Steve, you'll want to watch that later. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> Um, and is that it for you? That's all. That's yeah, all you did in the liquor store, man. Like three bottles in two weeks. I've been busy with other stuff. I have other projects. I don't think I told you about, but I have other projects that I'm working on. So besides studying, for me, I got um, one bottle here, and then maybe I'll have to step out for a second and get the other one. But um, I finally picked up the E. H. Taylor Four Green. Ooh, so, that one actually tastes good. At, at cost. so I remember last year. I was reserved one. Sadly, they gave it to a bar, so that kind of sucked. But um, someone finally reserved one for me, and I actually got it. So he did say, you better get it early because someone's going to take it. So I'm like, okay. So I went early. Yeah, no, that's that's a legit bottle. At, at, at cost, it's excellent. At secondary market prices, I think it's a little I don't dumb. know if the 2018 will go up to secondary pricing because it's a different batch, right? And something one that won. So it might be maybe uh, 200 bucks, maybe less. Yeah, but I mean, if you have a good distiller, I mean, you know, we'll getting see. the batches to taste similar, especially when you're using similar tasting casks that go into the mix, yeah. it's not too, too bad. And also, yeah, Eric, that's amazing. I hope you do. That's hilarious. The Whiskey and Title would love to be in your will and testament. Oh, yeah, that too. Somewhere. But <laughs> um, So, yeah, so today, oh, um, talk about what we got. No, you had it. That was a good segue anyways, yeah. because we were talking about you having that bottle. I mean, would you sell that bottle? Because it goes for 400 on the secondary. You paid, what, 80 for it? Yeah, I paid retail. So um, at this moment, because I want to buy some new Camber gear, like you mentioned earlier, maybe. But it's it's hard, right? So um, like I mentioned earlier before the show, like there's a bunch of these bottles that sadly are not open. So about 50, maybe 60% of my collection is open. So that's, that's, oh, a, bit, wow. that's, that's a bit more than, dude, you're probably one of the few that actually open a lot of your bottles. A lot of people you see on Instagram, they don't even open half their bottles. So I, th I get it for people who have like like Scotch Father having sink in 1.2 million dollar yeah. bottles of McAllen, but for the rest of us regular people, I mean it's just what 300 400 dollar bottle yeah, of whiskey four, tops maybe max. Generally. And the funny thing is like, for some weird reason with me like I get on a train where like oh, I just want Belvinis for the whole week, so I'll just be drinking different yeah. types of Belvinis and then so on and so forth, like some High West. So like large amount of my High West bottles except for my duplicates are open. So there's certain yeah. flavor profiles that I go for, and then you just have that kick for a week or something like that, for me anyway. So No, I do the same you thing. You know, and then like you got other bottles where I'm like, oh, I, like for instance, this four grain, right? Like I know it's good, but I, I'm still more of a fan of the barrel-proof stuff, so if I had to pick an EHL, yeah. I'll pick the barrel-proof to drink more. So it just becomes a point where I'm like, either I'm collecting it to resell later, or I'm just collecting it to have it in a set because, by God, those bottles look really good on a shelf. And then eventually I'll open it if a friend goes, oh, I've never tried this, and then I'm more than likely to open it up for somebody. So it's, it's kind of hard. Yeah. You know, with all those bottles coming I, out. I guess because I guess I'm trying to write reviews all the time for these, I'm in the other boat. I like constantly am opening new bottles. And it's rare that I don't open a new bottle. So most of the times, if I buy a bottle, it's because I want to open it for a certain occasion or I just want to open it to review. So say it's under 200 bucks, it's probably getting opened and then getting reviewed. And if it's, let's say, over 400-ish, then it's probably going to get saved for a special occasion. It will get opened. Like this year, if you see me post pictures on Instagram, you'll see the Highland Park 30 is still unopened, the Balvenie 30 is still unopened, and the Jura 30 is still unopened because I'm saving those for a party in August. But if you look last year, like Lymphitic 30, as soon as I got it, it was open. So it, it all depends on what it is you're looking for. So Charles, have you uh, have you found that thing yeah, you're I found looking it for yet? Yeah, But uh, no, like, <laughs> and that's the hard part. Like with all these bottles coming out all the time and then the rarity or the award winning, like I have a uh, E.H. Taylor, no, sorry, um, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof right there. I got a bunch, like four of them, but one of them mm -hmm. is one awards, right? So you know that the value goes up. I'm like, but I know that tastes the same. I mean, 
I have no doubt that my Highland Park, like all the, the 330s I just named are going to go up in value. There's not a doubt. Maybe not the Jura, but Highland Park 30 and Balvenie 30, they're going to go up in value. That's guaranteed. It's just not worth it to me. Yeah. Like making the extra part, money right? on it is not worth it to me for sharing with my friends. Like yeah. that to me is worth more than money can buy. Yeah, and then <laughs> So for me, it'll never be a question. So uh, I was going to show you guys something, but then it just it broke in the plastic bag. So that was fun. Um, I don't know what they're called now. Hello, Here Luis. Go. I got a, a Deanston Bordeaux cask. Oh, so these are from oh, um, oh, wait, Jason what? Whiskey Wise. Hold, hold on, hold on. No, Deanston is meh, but Bordeaux cask, you've got my full so attention. So it's a Deanston Bordeaux cask. And, and sadly, I can't read some of these because... Okay, so the Bordeaux cask was the one that leaked. Oh, fuck. Oh, my gosh. Bordeaux cask is like... Uh, Beaumore made a Bordeaux cask called Dusk that you cannot get anymore, and it was super limited. It was Awesome. So yeah, by the so Jason Whiskey Weiss. So when I um so if you guys didn't know, I went to London and Paris. That's the reason why we we're out, what? right? <laughs> and um, I met up with Jason Whiskey Wise. He's got a YouTube channel. You guys probably subscribed to him, but if not, I'll link him in the description. Great guy. And he took me to a place and then he started giving me these samples and I was like, holy shit, right? So he got me a Glen Moray Mas- Marsala cast. Glen Moray. Yeah. yeah. And, Masala. I think yeah. And then this one, blah 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 blah, because it sadly leaks. So I got to ask him what he sent me. And then a Shivas Regal Mizunara cast. Oh, I saw that when I was at the distillery. Yeah. Shivas Regal, like you can go to any of the Pernod Ricard distilleries and they have all kinds of bottles from all of the other distilleries. And I actually remember taking pictures in Scotland last year of the Mizunara cast because I was wondering if anybody else had that. But there are other brands that have done that. They just don't all talk right. about it. Glenn Fiddick is working on Dude, one. Dude, okay, so I... I've seen pictures from some ambassadors. One drink that I can cannot forget when I was in London was a Glendarlo. I think it's called the Irish uh, Irish Glendala. Glendala, thirteen year old Mizunara cast. Yeah. Oh, what's the name? Has Dude, that uh, whiskey architect? That thing is amazing. It was like spearmint bubblegum. Really? Gum. Oh, it brought me back to my childhood of double mint bubblegum. Really? Oh man. For me, it hit home just because of the bubblegum esque stuff. Interesting. But dude, like I was hunting that thing down. I messaged their dudes, and they're like, "Sadly, we don't have it. They can't ship to your state." And I'm like, "Fuck." So, oh, that's a good question to ask everybody in chat. Um, so if you could get only one bottle of something, would you drink it or collect it? And if you could get two bottles of it, would you drink one and collect one, or collect them both, or drink them both? Of any bottle in the world, it's like a, a million dollars. Oh, Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz just said what I do. Like I always get a backup if I know it's good. Like like McAllen Cast Strength. All right, I'm down two bottles, and like I have three more to go, but I know I'm going to get more. Highland Park full volume, and now that I found a store that has like ten of them in it, I'm going to buy another what three, four of them at least. <laughs> See, so if I could get a bottle for free, I wouldn't collect it. Not free. I'm talking about paying, oh, paying for, for it? it and knowing and knowing that and knowing it's good. That is good something and you, go something you enjoy. Shit, that's a really good question then. That's tough, right? Yeah, because like. The amount of money you put into it, you know you're gonna double, triple, like that whole auction with the McAllen's, right? Million dollars. Like, would yeah. I don't I don't know if anybody that so listens the last to the time show they sold, would freaking. The last time they sold, they sold at Christie's. Uh, it was almost ten years ago for seventy five thousand dollars. Was the last time somebody sold those two bottles? That person's kicking himself. So right in now. ten years, yeah, seriously, they went from seventy five thousand to one point two million, yeah. which is bonkers. That's, that's yeah, that's that's crazy. But then again, that person that was sold it for seventy five thousand, he probably bought it for a couple hundred bucks. But yeah, right. So he's probably thinking, I made a gold mine of seventy five thousand dollars. Probably. All right. So I'm but... gonna need your help with these, man, and you're gonna have to correct me wrong. So there is a Lost Distillery Company. I don't know if this is real or not. Where they have yeah, Lost Distilleries. Well, they have a box set. So this is where I this is where I think the collection yeah. and the um, drinking comes in, right? Well. At this point in my journey, people looking for reviews and so forth of my dumb ass. So um, I'm at the point where I think either samples or minis are kind of the best way to go. It saves me a lot of money. It gives more reviews out to people. So I thought this was really cool. That was a Lost Distillery set. And it's got a, yeah, only have two of those. a Lost a Dalaran, Gersten, Jericho, Toei Moore, and Strathy. I can't see the last letters. Strathila? Probably. So, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the... Not sure they But no, it's, it's, it's pretty a, interesting. It's Strath. I can't remember what. I, I have that. Yeah. So, I... Those are good. They're remakes, they're remakes of distilleries that are closed. They remade 
those distilleries profiles i don't know if they use original barrels from those distilleries or what but that's what they did but yeah i to be honest i thought this was a great thing for me especially in my journey like it's one of these yeah it just tells you handcrafted whiskeys style in the closed distillery and gives you little tasty notes tells you when they open yeah. and they closed it's interesting so i'm very excited to try these there are plenty of closed distilleries that are about to open back up oh, too yeah. so Especially, you see that McCallum's new, uh, what'd you call it? Their new joint? So, when I went to Scotland, that was under construction, and it looked awesome then. Oh. But compared to the old visitor center, which is like this little room, now the new one looks incredible. So, if we're still doing that Scotland trip next year, I'm excited to hit that place up. Let's do that. Let's do that, because hopefully, well, whatever. I'm studying for a reason. Yeah. But, uh, um, to get another job. Yeah. So, what do you guys think? Like, Please let us know in the comments if your collection is like mostly open, mostly closed. Why do you close them? Like we talk, for instance, like Wally's got a lot of his open because he likes to share his whiskeys. Sadly, I have no one to physically share them with. So a lot of them I send the samples or I just too lazy and I basically f like what I like. Dang. You must have minis, good stuff. I, I've only recently been getting into minis only because a lot of other people have them, but I really just want them for pictures because the mini version of a bottle plus the big version of the bottle, it just makes a cool looking picture and the 200 milliliter in between if they have yeah. them. So other than that, to me, a mini is like, I've never even cracked one before. Really? Oh, I've done like a few. Yeah, I've never there cracked was, a mini before. A, I, think it's like, I always thought they were for alcoholics. I think there's a Glenn, <laughs> uh, I got a Glenn Grant. I think it was 25 year old upstairs that um, Jason Whiskey Wise sent me. So that was pretty Shimon, cool. you didn't miss anything. Eric, you're going to have an awesome time. Oh, dude, that's going to be fun. <laughs> you don't like to share. Shimon, that is a lie. Yeah, Shimon. You are. The, the devil is a liar. <laughs> you definitely love to share. And to be honest, I think that's what the great thing about the community is like, um, I reached out to Nate when he I was um, showing off the Black Prince back then. He was more than happy to share it. And I was like, I could I would never afford a four hundred dollar bottle of whistle pig. I don't think that that was out of my price range for that. But I actually thought it was pretty good for what it was. So Shimon, I have to go to the store tomorrow. I have forgotten again also. Busy weekend, I'm sorry. I actually drove up to Pennsylvania to hang out with the whiskey watch, so it's a long Oh yeah, weekend. you helped him move, I think. No, I didn't get a chance to help him move. Oh, just uh sat and drank. He was sick. We just sat and drank at a bar. Also, Steve spent so much time at a bar, he's like the he, he might as well be the owner of that bar. Oh. Everyone knew him. <laughs> Everyone. It's like, oh, it's Steve. I mean, it was crazy. That's, That's really funny, though. I can see that. It was absolutely nuts. Didn't have to pay for my drink that got comped because what? everyone knew Steve. I, believe me, I was riding Steve's coattails. That's freaking <laughs> hilarious. You're like, oh, so you're Steve's friend. So what do you do? Does your YouTube exactly. channel? <laughs> exactly. Nothing? I don't know what I do. Yeah. I don't really do anything. Shimon, you bought some Lafroig. I I pity you. It's gonna be okay. Life life is. Life and is I showed more this than... last week, right? The PX cast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right now you're just bragging about it. This you haven't even cracked yeah. it yet. Oh man. Oh, have you? Oh, of course I have. Ba Bam. I cracked it on the show. Who, who secretly owns it, Shimon? What are you talking about? Secretly on Lafroig, Triple Wood, yes, and Quarter Cast. When there's that like bad. one or I have I have some IB Lafroigs that aren't bad. But they're definitely IB and they're definitely strong. But no, I have to admit though, man, yeah. the PX definitely cuts it down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think Steve wants me to mention that. So we went to this bar where they only had things from Pennsylvania. It was like Ooh. Pennsylvania whiskey, Pennsylvania rum, Pennsylvania everything, and then all the food Pennsylvania sourced. It was nuts. It was awesome. That's, that's really cool. I wish I had that over here. Yeah, it was, I know this. I've never seen a restaurant with that kind of theme. So. Every, even like I'm guessing was it just a bar or was it like a food place as well no it's a bar and a restaurant I didn't see the restaurant side but I assume that people go there <laughs> the bar side was fun Whiskey thief, to be honest I rather like I, I feel your pain when you buy a mini you want to buy a big bottle because it's so good and to be honest that saved you a lot of money too because this crap load of whiskeys I wish I tried first or had a mini of first oh really some of the stuff back uh, here, I'm like, I, uh, I spent a lot of money on this crappy ass bottle when I could have just tried it. I, I, stuff, I wish Scotch Mall Whiskey Society would do mini instead of making you go to events, but it's whatever. Oh, I need to sign up for that event for Monday. I keep forgetting. Dude, lucky you have events, man. I don't even have events around here, and our partner bar is not really a yeah. partner bar, so. Oh really? They don't give you free drinks or anything like that. They don't really have any events and stuff. It's talk to Ben about that. I have and Get he's that sorted like, out. Oh yeah, dude, they're just a place that carries our whiskey. We are super far off topic. Yeah. 
No, we're talking about collecting and what do you call it? Drinking. So we're talking about drinking right now. Uh, yeah, no. Like, I don't know. It's all for drinking. That's what it's for. That's why it gets bottled in the first place. Well, I get that people. So I got a message from a guy and he was literally broke down. He was like, hey, I got a choice to get this. I got a choice to buy this and a choice to buy this. And like, which one of these should I buy? Because I want to collect them and I want to sell them later. And I was like, listen to me. Like, selling is not what I do. I told him, I was like, I drink everything I buy. Like selling is a fool's errand to me. It's like saying, how do you know which bottle is going to be more valuable? I'll, I'll tell you what, it's probably expensive right now. Yeah. And eventually this bubble will burst. It doesn't ever feel, feel like it. And I'm sure it'll be years, but eventually it will stop because yeah. people will be like, I'm moving on to the next thing. Tequila, rum. And then all of a sudden it, it right. It's going to go down and then something else will be obviously fashionable. And then the cycle will continue again. So they'll lose value. Then all of a sudden there'll be a glut of stocks instead of a shortage, which is why Japanese whiskey is expensive. And then it'll go the other way that's all it is is supply and demand but it's not a game that the rest of us can afford to play i mean if you're not buying thousand dollar bottles you might get lucky once in a while but you're probably just if you're in 100 and 200 dollar bottles they're going to be worth yeah. less so like eric wakes out a good question it's like and I, I think i know your answer to this one have you ever hesitated on purchase of a <clears> bottle of whiskey because it's too expensive but then regretted not buying it i can see the mccallum cast strength on that one snow phoenix and yes shimon that's every Every market cycle, Snow Phoenix. I didn't. Oh yeah, you had a chance to buy I Snow had, Phoenix, didn't you? Multiple chances to buy Snow Phoenix was just sitting on the shelves. I had a bunch of Macallan Twelves back in then that were just sitting there. Now they're like double the price. What Mac Twelve? Yeah, like Mac Twelve, like the old school. I get Mac Twelve at Costco. For old cheap. school ones, the old school bottlings before they became like a watered down. <laughs> then um, it's just because like back when I was buying whiskeys, I was just buying them for the name. So I had bought a jo- bunch of Johnny Blue where I could have bought Pappies. Yeah. Oh, they're not becoming watered down. Did it's I ever, not watered down. Did we ever no, talk we about this? But it's just basically the... They're, they're switching to more American so oak. It looks lighter. And, and less European oak. And that's that's what's causing the problem. That's why double cast exists. Oh, Explorer's that's Edition of Glenfiddich. The triple wood. Those ones I, I slept on as well. Just the 19. Those are the only one that's yeah. here. The uh, bourbon cast reserve. Yeah, so... Oh, they were expensive anyways. I might have bought three. But yeah, that... That to me was the the key one, Eric. Wait, like I've seen those bottles, like especially the Snow Phoenix. That was the one that was just sitting there, and I regret not buying it. Log twenty five. That was worth a pretty penny. But that was expensive, even when you're trying to buy it. What else would there be? Think about it. that's basically, it. and it's just because like you can still get them, but it's like double or triple the cost now, and that's the heart. That's yeah. the pain point. Oh, I, I totally forgot that. So Steve just said I'm jealous that we're able to go to Jack Rose. So the, the other day I went to Jack Rose with a friend, and I decided I would only buy things that I definitely couldn't normally get. So I got like a single barrel Amroot peated, which was a mistake, but the person I introduced to whiskey loved it. Um, I don't remember the second one I got. Hey, Welsh. The third one I got, though, I got the Macallan 1841 Repro, the reproduction yeah, yeah, I made, yeah, yeah. just to try it. One, didn't enjoy it. That's Two, good. It was good to try it before I go out, and because that's one I would have spent a grand, you know, because that's what they cost. That's, that's the one in the metal bottle. tin, right? The big metal tin back in the day. Uh, it's uh, green metal tin. It's in a bottle. Yeah, that's a bottle. Because that was sitting next to the Snow Phoenix as well. Oh, was it? No, this is this is in a bottle. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know. Re- it probably came. There was an old Glenfiddich reproduction one that was in the bottle. Oh no, this is Macallan. Oh, Sorry, did I say Glenfiddich? Yeah, I think you did, bro. Yeah, Macallan eighteen forty one repro. Okay. It was that's crazy. Right. I wanted to try it because it was on the menu. It was like 30 bucks for a pour, but I was like, you know what? what? Screw it. Huh. Yep. And I regretted it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that that sucks. But at least, like, that's what's the funny part, right? Like, I don't know if you ever had this experience, but when, like, a bartender comes up to you and just asks you, you know, you ask them, like, hey, what would you recommend as a scotch? I've never had anybody ask me what kind of scotch I like. They just started pointing shit. Oh, yeah. No, I don't. So, you have to be really nervous because... So Jack Rose has an on-staff like sommelier, a whiskey sommelier. Right. So having someone there, his name's Chris something. I forget his last name all the time. It's weird. But um, having somebody there that you could talk to if you need to about something, if you're looking for something weird or whatever, like that's nice. Yeah. On the other hand, sometimes you just want to try weird stuff. What's weird is like I, I tell the guy, there's another place where they're supposed to be known for their whiskeys. I ask him, he's like, I'm like, hey, I want a reasonable price whiskey for this. And then he, all the things he tells me is either I have them or I've tried them. He's like, shit. So it's like, fuck, it's so hard. That sometimes. is like the worst experience in the world. People are always like, hey, man, check out this bar because they got a great selection. And I'm like, there's one bar with a great selection. And then every other bar in the country pretty much has my shelves in my bedroom. So I'm not sure how that yeah, works. So, and that sadly comes to collecting part is like sometimes you just want to collect all the stuff because of different flavors. Like have you I'm guessing since you've had such you have such a large collection, 
They're like Pokemon. You just collect like random like I go for random flavors now like rum cast finishes, masala, f- whatever m- finishes, Bordeaux finishes. I go for the weird stuff now, the rum finished in cherry. It's crazy, right? This is my fourth bottle of rum that's finished in cherry though. I love rum finished in cherry. It's so good. It just I don't know for me like collecting is a fun part because then you can actually walk somebody through a whiskey tasting. So to me, that's drinking, not collecting. Okay. Collecting, that kind of collecting is like literally, so you're saying drinking is the fun yeah. part because you get to enjoy the flavors of different bottles. Collecting, when I think of collecting, I think of people collecting like Stefano or I think of people like Scotch Father or like the Scotch Whisperer. These are people who are buying bottles that are 30, 40, 50 years old and they're sitting on them yeah. because they're going to be worth more later. As opposed to Walter right here, who's stupid, and he buys bottles that are thirty years old and spends twenty five hundred dollars, and then all of a sudden it's like, let's open them up this year. Well, I think for you, it's it's more like you're collecting. They're collecting for investment. You're collecting to either show people a tasting of this or to collect. Collecting to party. Yeah. To be honest, that's what basically it is, right? You're collecting to party. Celebrate yeah. your. I just don't get any, bottles. I don't get any return on my investment. <laughs> good time, good stories. It's always the fun part. Yeah, good times and smiles on people's faces. Oh, yeah. I've seen a lot of people on Instagram buying cases of just yeah. random shit. I mean, so the first time that I posted, like, hey, does anybody have some McAllen cast strength available? And people came out of the woodwork. They were like, I mean, Stefano for sure has something like 15 cases just laying around. And I'm sure he bought it when they were $80 a yeah. bottle. But if I had known how good it was at the time when it was $80 a bottle, I would have done the same yeah. thing. That's the problem. <laughs> I would have just bought tons of it. Uh, wait, wait, selling a double hibiki for four pounds? Holy shit. Double pours for four pounds? That's, that's not bad. Nuts. New friends? I can't make new friends. <laughs> I would make new. I don't know. And, I have friends. I have friends. Just my friends have. I have friends that share my values. Yeah. So I have a buddy who buys a lot of bourbon and we're in the same boat. Anytime he's got new bourbon, I always have samples if I want yeah. them. You know, sometimes I get let him let him borrow bottles out of like he, what he calls my Scotch library. Sometimes I borrow bottles from him. You know, every once in a while I'll be like, hey, can I just borrow that for you know some pictures and whatnot? So it just depends. See, whiskey watch depends on who you live with as well. Like finding rooms for bottles. I used to hide bottles around. Now I just like I just want it and just leave it there. You just buy more shelves. Yeah. To be honest, that's what kind of happens. That's what they're for. And you got to think about it this way. Sometimes you want to buy like I've got a freaking case of Hibiki 12s, and once in a while I'll offload one to buy two, three bottles or something else. So, so, Eric, mm, so it's a little different. If you collect cars, watches, I won't agree with wines. Wines are more in the whiskey pile. But if you collect cars or watches and you're making that investment to buy a certain thing because you know it's going to increase in value, it's something you can see and touch. And car-wise, it's there are very few cars that are under $100,000 that actually gain yeah, value. Most like the down. Super is one of the yeah. rare instances. Yeah, most of them are depreciating assets, just, just the way it is. But everybody knows when you buy a high-end Porsche, a you Ferrari, or a Lamborghini, like it's going to go up It's going to go up in you value. The, now, wait, wait. For, Ferrari, over time... So the Ferrari will do this. I've seen it before. Like for a little while, the 308 GTS, those were going, and that's like the Magnum PI car, 80s. I'm sorry, I like those Ferraris. They were going for a while, they were going for like 30 to 35. And you could literally pick up a GTS in decent condition hmm. that needed a little work for that price, which is amazing. Um, but now if you try to pick one up, I don't think you see them for less than like 50, 60. Same with the Testarossas. Okay. For a while, they were dropping down into the, like, you could see no, some like You're thinking about like, like cars that are like 40 years old, 30 years old, right? Yeah, no, but even the modern ones, you buy a modern, like, look at the Lamborghinis you can buy for, I mean, Ferrari, La Ferrari is going to do, well, I don't know if it'll do with the, uh, the, call it did. And then only, I'm thinking of the, uh, what was the, what was the $600,000 one that you had to be invited to buy? Why isn't the name escaping me? Why would I know it? Like, I'm going to buy one. Pina Ferrini, no, because everybody ends up for Ferraris. If you have an Enzo Ferrari, you were invited to buy it for 600000 and it was almost immediately worth a million dollars. I mean... That's oh, let's watch. I moved mine all in my car and not in a moving truck. So, so yeah, some of the things like watches and cars, you can, I mean, you can show people, oh, this is the watch on my wrist. And you can sell that Rolex if you needed to, or you sell that yeah. Adamar Pijouet, or you could sell that, I don't I know what brands you guys yeah. know, but like, if you see Stefano, he's nonstop with the Pateks, like of all kinds of references. It's so, the calibers are ridiculous. But I mean, to spend a Patek, you're going to spend at least 15 grand. And that gets you what it doesn't. Those things aren't even marketed to people like us who watch this yeah. show, because if you look at Patek's advertisements, it's marketed like, hey, this is for an heirloom. This is literally your future. You're giving you're just taking care of this for your children and, your children and their children. children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's what it's for. Or that's 
not the same kind of people. Yeah. Like we're literally talking about, hey, I'm gonna drink this bottle that will be worthless when I open it. Yeah, that's what's crazy too. And then I've been in homes with Rolls Royce parked in the living room. Holy that's, lord! That's, who, Eric, wait, that's F-dub, because man. <laughs> that's parking my house. In that's their like a freaking like house. Jaguar, <laughs> Ferrari, or a Ferrari, yeah, like a lion. You know, in the middle of the living room. Why would you have like a amazing car like that or an animal? <laughs> Stuff. Oh, I thought you meant the car. No, I was no. like, Jaguar's not on the no, same no, like page. No, no, like a cat. And then you meant like an actual Jaguar. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's... It's that's like having like something like, you know, like a totally lion, different. tiger, or like a monster in there. And you're like, why are you just staring at it? That's the Lancia. Okay, there are some cars that are just oddballs. I said that about the Mark IV Supra. Like, it was an oddball. It just, it gained value for whatever or reason. Or that freaking, whatchamacallit, but that's, that Back to the Future car. That's what I'm saying. Oh, the DeLorean. DeLorean. Yeah. DeLorean? <laughs> the DCM 1200 like that's such a random oddball car too so they are for sale now some guy bought the factory he's reframing them so yeah no so every once in a while you'll find a cheaper car under $100,000 that can do it that will be worth more, more money but you can't pick it you can't know you can't be like oh this is definitely yeah I definitely more. believe with you with the whole wine and whiskey anything like the spirits when you open it it breaks kind of thing like that I think where is the tin for Snow Phoenix going for 150 I will sell all three of my tins right now who wants to buy <laughs> with a bottle or just the tin? no just empty just the tin it it's probably making fake ones yeah how many glen cairns do you recommend keeping in your rotation whiskey thief to answer your question last time i counted in my shelf it was something like 45 before i broke one or two yeah i have about eight to ten but like for sat for this show i always have this one available but like I was saying, like, as opposed to cars and watches, that you have something at the end of the day, even if your watch winds down and it stops working, even if your automatic watch stops being automatic and it needs service, like your Rolex, and you need to spend 750 bucks on service, you could just let it sit on a shelf and it will still have its value. Yeah. Just somebody else is going to pay for service in the future. This, once you crack it open and drink it, it's worthless. Shimon, what like, the no f- one will buy an open Why do you have 100 freaking Glen Karens, dude? That's That's nuts. <laughs> Oh, Steve, yeah. Sorry. I don't even think I have a... Do I have a whiskey? I don't think I have a whiskey watch one. No, I was supposed to send it to you, but I broke mine, so I kept it oh. yours. Okay. But yeah, no, um... Whiskey Throttle, you missed the entire yeah, show. Dude. Literally. Right now, we're talking about... Random stuff. How you missed the entire show. We were literally thinking, where's Whiskey Throttle? Where, Dan, where did he go? He's taking pictures of like the scenery again, man. <laughs> but uh, I guess on that note, it was... To be honest, it was a great chat just talking to you guys in the chat about those uh, collections and drinking. It seems like a lot of us are in the drinking category. Yeah, I think so. Um, but, you know, there is, you know, once in a while you find a bottle that you want to collect or you want to hold on for a special occasion like your 30s and stuff like that. So I don't call that really collecting. It's more just like which holding off the drink. Which you're totally going to get to drink, right? Yeah. So and I got to get to go, get to go over there and visit you, have a few drinks. Because you'll be here, right? We'll make it. We'll make it happen. <laughs> I'll probably have to crash on the couch, though. August 25th. August 25th. Done. But, yeah. Um, if you guys didn't um, if you guys didn't tune in earlier, Steve. talk about this. Oh. So, in the first few minutes, I talk about a stupid moment. So, take a look. It is pretty hilarious when I look back at it. So. I know. Just, you yeah. had a moment. I did. We all had moments. All right, guys. And then, um, yeah. So, Wally. Oh, nope. wait. Nope. It's not time yet. What? Why not? Yeah, no, I was like, I feel my bottle. You know why. You know why. Oh, the glare. The glare is crazy. Playing it like a, like a trumpet. <laughs> now, what instrument am I playing? I don't know. The nose flute. But yeah. Guys, enjoy. Drink with friends. Jason correct. Whiskey Wise, you got you missed out. I talked about some of this, and sadly, something leaked, so I can't read the names. So, but yeah, take care, guys. Thank you again. Oh my gosh, I wish I could get whiskey delivered to my job. That'd be amazing. What? That'd be pretty cool. I would think you're not going. <laughs> whiskey V, correct. The summary for tonight's episode is: drink it or keep it, whatever makes you happy, not money. Yes. And on that note... Because you know what they say. There are some people who are so rich. Never mind. I'll leave that proverb for another time. Pieces.